Welcome to my channel. I'm Scott and in this video I am going to walk you through the process of valuing tourmaline oil stock by analyzing their financial statements and dissecting their financial ratios so we can determine if it's a buy or sell. Tourmaline oil develops and produces oil and natural gas properties in the Western Canadian sedimentary basin. The company is headquartered in Calgary, Alberta, Canada and was founded in 2008. It went public in 2010 and currently trades on the TSX, Pink Sheets, and Deutsche Borsa. All the numbers in this video are in Canadian dollars since we're looking at the ticker that trades on the Toronto Stock Exchange. Let's get started with the model. This is a mid-cap company, 7.9 billion market cap, they're trading at $26.52 a share, and they have 297 million shares outstanding. Let's look at the financials. The way you value a company is you estimate the free cash flows into the future and then you discount those numbers back to today's value. That's what we're doing in this video. And free cash flow is cash flow from operations minus capital expenditures. So you can see they had negative free cash flow in two of the four years. Net income is the profit and loss on the income statement. It's revenue minus expenses. And that's positive and consistent, peaking in 2020 at 618 million. Revenue is a sales for the company. And that grows a little bit from 1.9 billion to 2.1 billion. This is the company's income statement. The top line is the revenue, the sales. Below that is the cost of revenue. These are the expenses directly related to generating the revenue. And the difference is the gross profit. And they had their lowest gross profit in 2020. Below that is operating expenses and then operating income. Even though they had their highest revenue, they still had negative operating income. It was positive in prior years. Below that is the interest they pay in their debt, and they paid $42 million in 2020, which is less than 2019. Then below that is other income and expenses. And this is the reason they have such high net income, is this positive in other income and expenses. I would focus on operating income when I look at the income statement. This is their statement of cash flows. The top line is operating cash flow. That's how much cash the company generates from its operational business. Their operating cash flow is pretty steady year to year. You could think of operating cash flow as net income converted to cash because net income is your accounting profit and loss. It's not actual cash. Then you have capital expenditures, which are investments in property, plant, and equipment. It looks like they're investing a lot of money in CapEx. The idea is to invest a lot in CapEx into your company in the early years, and hopefully that will generate more free cash flow in the future years. Operating cash flow minus CapEx gives you your free cash flow. And they had negative free cash flow in two years and positive the other two years. They're issuing a lot of capital stock to run their business. They issued 57 million in 2017, then 30 million, 200 million, and 400 million. Every time the company issues capital stock, it increases the shares outstanding, making your shares less valuable. They're also using debt to run their business. They issued 128 million in 2017 and 36 million in 2020. They did pay down 59 million of debt in 2018. Let's look at the capital structure. 8.8 .8 billion of equity, 1.9 billion of debt. They're 82% equity, 18% debt. And their net debt is 1.7 billion. And their WAC is 8.65%. And that's a discount rate we're going to apply to the future cash flows. We estimated four years of future free cash flows. We also estimated the terminal value, which is all cash flows past year four. That's 8.4 billion. We discounted those numbers back to today using the weighted average cost of capital. We get a value of the company of $6.8 billion. We divide that by 297 million shares. And we get a calculated stock price of $23. They're trading at $26.52, so they're trading at a 16% premium. It's a sell according to the model. Simply Wall Street is in the other direction. They're at $48 a share. They're saying the stock is undervalued. This is a stock price in the last five years. So it was trading in the low 40s at one point. And then the stock price came down for a few straight years. It looks like it's on an uptrend. If you could have got it down here, you could have made a pretty nice return. They started paying a dividend in 2018. Their dividend payment has doubled since then from 8 cents up to 16 cents. They pay a 2.41% dividend yield and they pay out 31% of their net income. Since they have so much money in CapEx, they pay out 400% of their free cash flow. Their industry pays a 4.7% dividend yield. They're about half that. They have a pretty high beta, 1.85, so the stock moves about twice the market. The stock has gone up 99% in the past 52 weeks, while the S&P 500 went up 
The 52 week low was $11, the high was 27. The stock is trading above its 50 day and 200 day moving average. A little over 1 million shares are traded each day on this stock. Of the 297 million shares outstanding, 276 million are on float, 39% are held by institutions, and under 1% of the shares are shorted. In the past year, this stock has gone up 98%, whilst industry went up 40% and the market went up 41%. In the past three years, this stock has gone up 23%, whilst industry decreased 6% and the market increased 29%. But in the past five years, this stock is negative. Its industry has a small positive, while the market went up 58%. Their annual earnings in the past five years grew 27%, similar to their industry, while the market grew 13%. In the last year, their earnings grew 94%, mainly due to that large other income and expense item, while their industry decreased 21% and the market increased 9%. If you invested $10,000 into this company 10 years ago and reinvested the dividends, you'd be at $8,200 today. That's an 18% loss. The biggest shareholder is CI Global at 9%, then the CEO at 5.5%, FMR, Vanguard, and Dimensional Fund. Let's look at their financial ratios. The average P.E. in the market is 33, the median is 22. P.E. is stock price over earnings per share. To calculate earnings per share, that's net income over shares outstanding. They're at 12.7, so investors are paying $12.70 for $1 of earnings. Price to sales is 3.7, which is between the median and average. And they have a really good price to book ratio of 0.9. Since they have negative EBIT, they have negative return on invested capital and negative interest coverage ratio. Their ROE is 7% and their current ratio is 1.2. Their current assets are $220 million of cash and $363 million of receivables. So the company does seem to be undercapitalized. They had $48 million of free cash flow, $112 million of working capital, but they paid out $190 million in dividend payments, so they're short $30 million. They may need more equity or debt financing to run their business over the next 12 months. The best way to look at ratios to compare them to companies in the same industry. I've done videos of 14 companies in the same industry as Tourmaline. And if Tourmaline has a number in red, they're worse than the average. If they have a number in blue, they're better than the average. So they're better in PE, worse in price to sales. They have a really good price to book. They're worse in average and current ratio, but they're above one. They have a positive ROE. Most companies in this industry have negative. They're lower in debt than average. When you convert the market caps to Canadian dollars, they are lower than average at 7.9 billion. Average is 9.5 billion. Their dividend payment is higher than average. So to summarize, I have them trading at a 16% discount. They're in a really important industry that's so needed, but a lot of companies in their industry have taken a beating the last couple of years. They do pay a decent dividend, so even if the stock doesn't grow too much, you at least get that dividend payment. I rank their free cash flows 4 out of 10, their revenue 7 out of 10, and their ratios 8 out of 10. So let me know what you think. Give this video a like, subscribe, or comment below. Also, if you'd like to get a custom valuation or just support the channel, you can become a member by clicking on the link in the description below. Thanks for watching.